Hey guys, Daz here from Total Reformation. Now in today's video tutorial, we're gonna continue on from the last one where we spoke about potential hidden stresses, which is affecting or stopping you from achieving your results. At the last video, we spoke about diet and how diet alone can affect our hormones, uh, which is quite fascinating. So if you haven't seen that, go check that one out now so that you kind of get the flow of what we're talking about here. So today we're gonna to talk about exercise and how exercise can have both a positive and negative effect on our hormones. Being hormones as the first potential hidden stressor that most people aren't quite aware about these days. Let's see if we can help you out. We're just gonna shine some light on a few areas which we think are very, very important for pretty much everyone um, and then give you some really practical tips just to try and implement straight away. So, how can exercise affect our hormones? Let's look at the positive. Um, actually, let's look with the negative first of all because that's more important because just in general, the right type of exercise and just getting moving has, an, a great, has a great effect on our hormones and the structure of our hormones too. So let's look at the negative. Um, these days, there's so much available for people. There's so many new classes, there's different styles, there's uh, apps, there's YouTube, there's heaps. We're finding that people are almost doing way too much exercise. They're tipping the scale so far out of balance that they're burning themselves out. Sometimes they don't know it because you fall into a little bit of a trap when you get started. You're in the routine, you're in a bit of a flow, your cortisol levels are flying. So for about two weeks, you usually feel fantastic and you think you're on the, and then all of a sudden, bang, you either get sick or things start to happen. So basically, when it comes to exercise these days, we find that people are either doing way too much or not enough at all. Um, or it's too light, way too easy. And obviously that's gonna have a big impact just as much as doing, as doing way too much exercise. Now the reason why that can affect our hormones, let's just look at the cortisol for a second. Cortisol is our stress hormone. We need it, it gets us up in the morning, it keeps us going throughout the day. It's an anti-inflammatory as well. We spoke about that in diet in the last video. So let's just understand this, that um, the last video we also spoke about biorhythms and circadian rhythms that the humans, us humans have and we're in sync with our environment. When we wake in the morning, we're meant to have higher levels of cortisol. As I said, it gets us up. When we exercise, we're also sending cortisol up at the same time. When we're sleeping throughout the night, we're meant to have higher levels of melatonin being our um, sleep hormone. As we go through the day, it's meant to cycle through this circadian rhythm where they cross over each other. So when we have too much exercise, if the type of exercise is really intense, which the, the high intensity training or the HIIT training is so popular these days, it will eventually start to create some issues through here. We are gonna have a little bit of a burnout going on or a communication issue between the brain, the hypothalamus, and the adrenal cortex and the adrenal glands. So the duration, the type, um, and also the time of day will have a massive impact on your hormones and what you're doing. So let's just look at this for example. If you're training late at night, when your cortisol levels should be coming down to regulate our sleep cycles, and you're training and boosting that cortisol back up, we're gonna have some issues with some sleep, which is something we're gonna talk about in our next video, but it's also gonna uh, affect everything else as well, including testosterone, um, and it will have a massive impact. So all these need to be I guess assessed and looked at, especially if you're not getting anywhere, you plateaued out, you should really be understanding this and you should be working with someone who has a lot of experience in this area. It's something that does take a bit of time for most trainers and practitioners to understand. So that's a really important um, aspect of how exercise can affect our hormones too much, too intense, too long, and the type of exercise will really cause some havoc in our hormonal structures. I'm gonna keep you moving along. Um, the other thing that we find is most people aren't recovering properly. As I said, they're either backing up, they're almost doing two crazy exercises in a row. Unless you're an athlete and that is your life, 
Um, there's, there needs to be a good separation between the humans and what you're doing with work and the stresses you have in your life and athletes who their sole purpose is to train for performance. So there's a big difference. Are you sleeping? We're gonna get into that. That's gonna affect your results as well and it's also gonna affect your hormones at the same time. Um, if there's no recovery, it means that our fascial tissue, um, the actual repair of all the muscles too, is hindered, which is also going to throw everything out too. Basically, we're, we're screwing up with our, the flow of the hormonal chain. And there's some when we work with clients who are, do have adrenal burnout or have some issues, we actually show them our hormonal structures and how... Um, what actually happens, what takes place in our hormone, hormonal chains. And when we're lacking in testosterone, or in some cases in females, you've got too much testosterone, or we've got some issues with sort of ratios between the estrogens and, test and testosterone, we're gonna have a lot of issues. So females with the PCOS, this is one area that what we're finding these days is they have hormonal imbalances because they're doing either way too much exercise and the type of training. So that's important too. The next crucial element that's gonna have a massive impact on our hormones, which is quite surprising for a lot of people, is our posture. Now our posture plays a big part with the type of training we're doing and the type of results we're getting as well. If you have poor posture and you're not working to improve that, you're gonna be constantly in a sympathetic state. And that sympathetic state, as we spoke about, excess cortisol floating through the system, means excess um, fat you're gonna actually keep and hold on to, um, and it's gonna really start to affect all this as well. Your training should ha include a whole lot of posture um, building or correcting exercises as well. And this is part of the recovery too, okay? So posture is almost should be at the top of the list and that's something we work very hard with. You need to be able to maintain posture even throughout your workout as well. So that's a big thing that's missing in the industry these days. Everyone's too worried about um, you know, burning it out, burning the calories and going as hard as they can. They lose the, the uh, integrity of their body, which is so important. Um, also too, emotional and mental states. Uh, we always make sure when, before we start with anyone in any workout, where are, are they mentally and emotionally? If they've come in and they've had a fight with a partner or they've had a stress day at work, and then we go and put them in an extra load, we're just screwing this up even more. So it's almost gonna have a little bit of a checklist before you start your exercise. Where am I? Am I ready to go? Have I slept okay? Have I had a good, is my diet good? Is my digestion good? There's almost like a checklist that you should have before you begin your exercise or begin any workout in general. So that is a big one too, understanding how all that will have an impact on all of our hormonal structures too. We're trying to get the neurotransmitters working properly, which is one of the elements we're gonna go through, um, to be able to make sure you're getting the most out of your exercise. Also too, a very important thing is females in their cycle. Um, it, this is huge, it's something that seems to be neglected. Yes, we can train females the same as males and we should be, but there's a few more things we've got to understand and be careful with as well. Obviously, females are gonna have a lot more going on through here depending on the time of their cycle. So learning that cycle and where you're at is very important as to what type of exercise you should be doing as well, because that's gonna tie into your recovery and it's also gonna tie in balancing this and achieving the results you're after. So there's a couple of just basic ones. We think they're the most important ones. I've probably missed one or two there, but at least we're starting to get the message across about how your exercise can affect your hormones, which are therefore gonna affect your results. So these are very, very crucial. We do some pretty cool functional lab testing here to assess this and guarantee if we know that someone has some issues through here, we have to adjust this, very important. And the reason why most people have got issues here is because they've neglected or they've screwed this up or they've approached the training side of things the wrong way. And it's not their fault, it's just the way the society and the industry is at the moment. There's, I think that it's backwards in terms of what they're really pumping across. Uh, there's no real intelligence anymore when it comes to exercise. And that sounds like a bit of a big statement, but it is. Um, it's, 
it needs a bit of a change and this is what we're going to try and get the message across to everyone. So what we recommend doing, some take home things to get started straight away, this is going to help you. So assess your exercise, um, you know, the type of training you're doing, um, how long or the time of the day you're doing it too. Be careful of training too intense at night time. Night time should be more about your work in exercises, which is your meditation, maybe your myofascial release, even some light yin yoga if that's what you want to be doing. Um, that's very important. You can do all your exercise more in the AM leading up into the afternoon. That's when you're going to have some better effect hormonally. Okay, so look at that too. Um, choose wisely with the type of exercise program you're doing. Don't just jump on to one because someone else is doing it, a friend's doing it, or it's popular at the moment. Like really think about it, assess it, know where you're at, and work towards your goal in a really intelligent way. Be smart about your movement, be mindful about your movement. Very, very important. Correct your posture should be number one. Core, Functioning and, um, and posture building is at the top and we recommend a book called Power of Posture by Functional Patterns. That's a great breakdown of understanding how a true posture should be and give you some tips on how to improve that and it's something that we do here with pretty much everyone as well. So that should be at the top of your list is correct, uh, correct posture. Um, and have a little checklist before you start exercising. Are you ready? Are you actually ready to train? For the, either that day, either if you're brand new to it, are you ready? Have you gone through all these other checklists first of all? It's something that you should do at the beginning of each exercise. How intense is this gonna be? Am I ready for this? Or do I need to adjust and adapt to my session to how I'm feeling, to what's going on that day, for example? And also too, um, females, we know your cycle. It's amazing how many uh, females just don't know their cycle. So track it, know what section of your cycle you're in and either contact us or research and find out the best times to train, the type of training in the different parts of your cycle. It's gonna be less stressful on your body. It's gonna be less wear and tear and it's actually gonna help out in the long term understanding this um, because as I said before, especially if you're suffering from PCOS or a whole lot of other hormonal issues, your training is either gonna do make it worse or it's actually gonna help in the long term. So there we go, there's a couple of basic things as to how exercise can affect our hormones and how hormones can affect your results. So I hope that helps. Feel free to share this one with many people. If you think that someone is either training too much, shoot them this link um, and if, see if you can get them in here if we want to, um, we can try and direct them in the right direction, hopefully. Um, but that's pretty much, hopefully that helps. Check out all the rest of our videos. Make sure you check it out on social media and we'll look forward to seeing you guys on the next video. We talk about how sleep can affect our hormones and how hormones can affect our sleep. I'll see you guys then.